Hello dear students, welcome to Top Scholars. Chemical Properties of Metals So friends, let's talk about metals. Metals are generally used to make utensils, they are used to make electric wires as well as metals are used for construction purposes, right? So metals are generally reactive in nature, right? And we know that metals lose electron easily and on losing electrons, metal form positively charged ions. So since metals lose electron easily and form positively charged ions, metals are called as electropositive elements. So what are metals? Electropositive elements. Why so? This is because metals lose electron easily and form positively charged ions. So friends, now we can easily define metals, right? So metals are electropositive elements that tend to donate electrons and what do they form? Positive ions, exactly. So metals are electropositive elements. Why? Because they donate electrons and form positive ions. Let's take an example to understand this, right? Now, if I talk about sodium, right, the atomic number of sodium is 11. So, its electronic configuration is 2, 8, 1. Now, as you can look, sodium has one electron in its outermost shell, right? So, in order to become stable, what does sodium do is sodium loses, that is, it gives away this one electron. So, when sodium loses this one electron, it forms sodium cation, that is, positively charged ion. So now tell me how many electrons can you see in the outermost shell of sodium cation? Yes, 8 electrons. That means now sodium becomes stable with the octet state exactly. But friends, do all the metals react in the same manner? That is what is the reactivity series of metals. The reactivity series of metals, as you can see over here, is simply an arrangement of metals, right? You can see metals are arranged in the decreasing order of their reactivity. In this reactivity series, as you move from top to bottom, the reactivity of the metal decreases. That means the metals which are placed at the top of the reactivity series are the most reactive metals. Whereas the metals which are placed at the bottom of the reactivity series are the least reactive metals. So now can you tell me which is the metal which is the most reactive metal? Yes, potassium. Why? Yes, because potassium is placed at the top of the reactivity series. And as we said, reactivity goes on decreasing as we move down the series, right? But what about the least reactive metal? Can you tell me which is the least reactive metal placed in the reactivity series? Yes, it is gold. Because gold is placed at the bottom of the reactivity series. Now, friends, you can also observe that we have hydrogen that is placed in between, right? So, I can say that the metals which are placed above hydrogen in the reactivity series are more reactive than hydrogen. And on the other hand, the metals which are placed below hydrogen in the reactivity series are less reactive than hydrogen, exactly. So, let's discuss some of the chemical properties of metals. How do metals actually react with oxygen? Now friends, metals generally react with oxygen wherein metals donate electrons to oxygen and they form metal oxides. So let's quickly write down the general reaction, right? So what did I say just now? Yes, metals, they react with oxygen, exactly. And what do they form? Metal oxides. So remember the general reaction, friends. Metal reacts with oxygen to give metal oxide, exactly. Let's take an example for this. Magnesium, as you can see, reacts with oxygen, right? And what do I get over here? Magnesium oxide, which is a metal oxide, exactly. Now, these metal oxides, when they are dissolved in water, they react with water, resulting in the formation of alkali. For example, again, we have magnesium oxide, right? So, when this magnesium oxide, which is a metal oxide, when it is dissolved in water, it reacts with water. And what does it form? It forms magnesium hydroxide, which is an alkali. But what are alkali, friends? Yes, alkalis are bases that are highly soluble in water. So here we understood that metals react with oxygen to give you metal oxide. And when these metal oxides react with water, what do they give? Yes, they give alkalis, that is metal hydroxide. So let's understand how is actually a metal oxide formed, right? So here we have magnesium. What is the atomic number of magnesium? 12. So, 
it has two electrons in the first orbit, eight electrons in the second orbit and again two electrons in the third orbit that is the outermost orbit, right? What about oxygen? Yes, oxygen has atomic number eight. So, its electronic configuration is 2 comma 6. That means oxygen has 2 electrons in the first orbit, 6 electrons in the second orbit, that is its outermost orbit. So, in order to become stable, what does magnesium do? Magnesium gives away, it loses its 2 electrons. And now these 2 electrons that are lost by magnesium are gained by oxygen atom. So, magnesium on losing two electron forms magnesium cation that is plus two Mg2 plus. And what about oxygen? Oxygen on accepting two electrons forms O2 minus that is anion. And now these oppositely charged ions attract to each other resulting in the formation of magnesium oxide that is the metallic oxide. But friends, Reactive metals, that is, the metals which are placed at the top of the reactivity series, say sodium and potassium. Since sodium and potassium are highly reactive, when they are exposed to air, they react with oxygen present in the air and catch fire. And this is the reason why sodium is kept immersed in kerosene. Why is this so? This is because when sodium is kept immersed in kerosene, the contact between the sodium metal and the atmospheric oxygen breaks down. And so, sodium does not react with oxygen present in the atmosphere. So, here we understood that sodium, which is a reactive metal, it actually reacts vigorously with oxygen present in the atmosphere and forms sodium oxide. And that is the reason why sodium is kept immersed in kerosene, right? So, what is the reason friends? Can you now tell me? Why is sodium kept immersed in kerosene? Yes, this is because sodium is a highly reactive metal which on exposure to air reacts with oxygen present in the air and forms sodium oxide. And in order to prevent this, we always keep sodium immersed in kerosene. Exactly. But friends, how do metals react with acids? Metals generally react with dilute acids and form metal salts along with the release of hydrogen gas. Let's quickly write down the general reaction, right, to understand what just now I've spoken, right? So, what did I say now? Yes, metal reacts with what? Dilute acids. And what does it form? Metal salts along with the liberation of hydrogen gas. Friends, remember. Whenever metal reacts with dilute acid, what does it give me? Salt and hydrogen gas, exactly. Let's take an example for this. Zinc metal, right, which reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid. And what does it give me? Yes, it gives me zinc chloride, which is a salt. And what I get? Yes, hydrogen gas is liberated. So, here we understood that metals, when react with dilute acids, result in the formation of salt along with the liberation of hydrogen gas. Now, let's understand this with a simple experiment. So, here we have a round bottom flask. We have taken some zinc pieces in this and this round bottom flask is sealed with a two bore stopper. Now, through one of the bores, we have passed a thistle funnel. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to add dilute hydrochloric acid through this thistle funnel. Now, as we know, when acids react with metals, what do we get? Yes, salt along with the liberation of hydrogen gas, right? So, when zinc reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid, what do I get? Yes, zinc chloride along with the liberation of hydrogen gas. Now, this hydrogen gas which is formed passes through the delivery tube. And as you can see, the other end of the delivery tube enters into the glass trough which is filled with water. Also, you can see over here, we have a glass jar which is filled with water and this glass jar is inverted on the other end of the delivery tube. Now, as the hydrogen gas passes through the delivery tube, it enters into this glass jar filled with water. Now, friends, you can also observe that there are some bubbles which are formed in the glass jar, right? These bubbles indicate that there is some gas which is released and we know that which is the gas? Yes, hydrogen gas, exactly. You can also observe that as more and more bubbles pass through the glass jar, the level of water in the glass jar goes on decreasing. Why this is so? 
This is because hydrogen gets collected by the downward displacement of water. So, as more and more hydrogen gas gets collected in the glass jar, the level of water in the jar goes on decreasing. Exactly. So, here we understood that metals when react with dilute acid, which is the gas which is liberated? Yes, hydrogen gas is liberated. Exactly. To learn more about this topic, download Top Scholars app.